a 0 to 100 kph time of 3.8 seconds is a figure you'd associate with a supercar. Up to 1680 litres of luggage space isn't. And that's exactly what makes this Audi RS6 Avant just so interesting. It's a car that'll change your perception of what an estate can or cannot be. And for that matter, what a supercar can or cannot be. A bit on it as an estate first. I promise to keep it brief. Well, with all seats up, its boot has a luggage capacity of 565 litres. The loading lip is low, the loading bay is well shaped and should you need more space, the rear seats fold flush with the floor to make space for all sizes of luggage. And man, oh man, is express delivery possible. It's all down to that bomb of an engine under the hood. Well, it's the same engine that passed the RS7, so I'm guessing you know a bit about it already. Still, here's a quick recap. It's a 4-litre, twin-turbo, direct-injection V8 that makes a crazy 553 bhp and 71.8 kgm of torque. There's cylinder-on-demand tech too that switches off four of the eight cylinders under light loads for better efficiency and emissions. We didn't do a full-blown fuel efficiency run in our time with the car, Come on, it's got 553 bhp. But we did find the transition from V4 to V8 and back to V4 quite seamless. The engine comes mated to an 8-speed torque converter gearbox and it goes without saying that power is channeled to all four wheels via Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system. In typical driving, the front to rear split is 40 to 60, but depending on conditions, as much as 70% of power can go to the front or 85% can go to the rear. And for added precision, there's torque vectoring too. In a straight line, the RS6 is just manic. There's no launch control here, but the all-wheel drive system does allow for controlled ballistic getaways. Seriously, you just can't bore off the way this thing picks up speed, whether you're at a standstill or even from 120 kilometers an hour. It's so fast that by the time you look down at the speedometer, you're already going too fast. The truth is, you just can't tire of the force with which this car builds speed, whether it's from a standstill or 120 kilometers an hour. Seriously, thanks to the twin turbos, the whole rev range is the power band. <laughs> The super quick gearbox also deserves due credit here. It shifts gears without any delay, be it in full automatic mode or when operated manually via the paddle shifters or gear lever. The exhaust also adds its own share of drama to proceedings. There's an ever-present bassy rumble to the exhaust note and then it builds into a deep-throated growl and then right at the top of its rev band, it goes into a roar. Set the exhaust to the dynamic setting and it'll also pop and bark when you downshift. Quite thrilling. As standard, the RS6 comes with an air suspension, but our test car came with the optional and sport bias steel springs. This setup also links each damper to the one diagonally opposite to it and effectively regulates oil flow in all four to minimize undue body movements. Our RS6's optional sport differential also seemed to do its work rather well balancing power between the rear wheels in the bends. Around the corners and with this suspension, the RS6 feels superbly poised. Uh, there's little by way of body roll and grip levels are just amazing. Of course, there's uh, Audi's Quattro system which grants the RS6 a certain all-weather capability which you wouldn't get in its rear-wheel drive rivals. Uh, today has been a mix of sunshine and rain and uh, the fact that I've been able to have a good time without fear of losing it halfway, says a lot about the system. However, for all its tenacity, the RS6 doesn't feel as exciting as a BMW M5 or a Mercedes AMG E63 would on the same roads. A part of this is down to the steering. Sure, it's got ample weight when set to dynamic, but like other Audi units, it literally keeps you at arm's length from the happenings at the front wheels. And that's a bit of a downer. Still, turn-in is sharp and you'll experience a bit of understeer only at the very limit. The good bit is that the RS6 works as an everyday car too. 
because despite their sport bias, the RS6's steel springs balance out the opposing requirements of agility and comfort quite well. Yes, the ride is firm across all settings, but comfort mode does do justice to its name. If I were to spec the car though, I'd stick to the standard 20-inch rims with the more absorbent, higher-profile tyres. I'm sure they won't look all that much down on the gorgeous 21-inches our car came with. Over to the subjective section of looks. As someone not particularly fond of the estate shape, I must say the RS6 has made me a convert. Sure, this car's blindingly red paint scheme makes it look particularly hot, but even then the whole look is just so menacing. It's almost sinister. And to think once estates were considered borderline boring. The tail end in particular looks the business thanks to a carbon fiber diffuser and a pair of oversized exhausts. This is not your run-of-the-mill estate. The exaggerated wheel arches, the blacked-out grill, those large air intakes and that peeling gaze of the RS6's matrix LED headlamps also make it abundantly clear this is not your run-of-the-mill A6 either. The cabin is no less special. Chunky flat-bottom steering wheel apart, there's plenty of Alcantara, brushed aluminium and carbon fibre trimming on the inside to distinguish this from the more, well, everyday versions of the A6. Thankfully, the familiar dash remains as user-friendly as ever, with all controls positioned within easy reach. RS6 Avance get front sport seats as standard that not only look sexy but also offer great support. Still, the option to adjust side bolstering would have been welcome. The rear seats are more standard in form but offer good comfort for two occupants. A third middle passenger will have to contend with the high centre tunnel. Question is, how much of a bearing would rear seat comfort and boot space have on a buyer's decision to go for an RS6 Avant? Because the 1.35 crore rupee RS6 is primarily a supercar that just happens to be an estate. If you look at it in that light, the RS6 thoroughly impresses. Then again, so do its closest rivals, the M5 and E63, both of which are sold in India in more conventional and popular sedan form. Thing is, Audi simply doesn't make the RS6 as a sedan, which should explain the somewhat curious addition of the RS6 Avant to the India lineup. While the RS6 Avant is sure to stand out at supercar meets, I'm not sure if there's a sizable enough population of supercar buyers who are really looking for an estate. Still, those willing to break the norm are guaranteed a car that's blisteringly fast and very different from everything else on our roads. Rest assured, your dog or perhaps even your furniture won't travel any faster. <laughs>